check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Hello, everybody. I'm racing's greatest showman, Randy Pettit, the voice you hear to historic Bowman Gray and the infamous Ace Speedway in Central North Carolina. Well, as we get closer to the 20th anniversary of the death of Dale Earnhardt Sr. at Daytona, I'm using this channel to help fondly remember one of the greatest drivers of all time and his legendary car owner, one of the most famous graduates of my home track, the Madhouse, Mr. Richard Childress. Well, today we're going to hop in my Wayback Machine. It's sitting right over there. And we're going to travel back to the hip 1970s. And we're going to hear about the first time Earnhardt and Childress ran into each other. Literally. Well, we're going to hop out in 1974 to visit Metrolina Speedway off Fairgrounds Road on the northeast side of Charlotte. It's a half mile track that, like many of them today, is now ancient history. And you can learn more about this historic track by watching the first episode of Lost Speedways hosted by Dale Earnhardt Jr. But on July 7, 1974, Metrolina was alive, a fresh payment and a field of 20 Grand National Machines, most of them driven by established stars like Cale Yarborough, Bobby Allison and Benny Parsons, and some from the late model sportsman ranks. Then only 23, local boy Dale Earnhardt Sr. was preparing to mix it up with the big boys for the first time in the larger and heavier Grand National cars. Our young driver leveled the playing field somewhat because of his familiarity with the track from winning there in lower divisions. Earnhardt showed uncharacteristic patience as he worked his way through the field in a Chevy Monte Carlo owned by driver owner Richard Brown. Earnhardt found himself battling for, with another struggling independent racer, Richard Childress, for second place in the late stages. Well, the fire and aggressiveness that would come to be known as Earnhardt came bubbling to the surface when he drove his car a little too hard and spun out, eventually settling for fourth place. That Metrolina race was pretty special, Earnhardt recalled to writer and friend Benny Phillips many years later. I always knew in my heart I could run with those guys. That was my first chance to actually go and do it. Well, the winner that day at Metrolina, it was the pride of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and Bowman Gray Stadium graduate Richard Childress, who spun completely around himself in a wild final lap, yet somehow recovered to claim the $1,400 first prize. It would prove to be the only victory for Childress as a driver in the full-size Grand National machines. Well, wait a minute, you say. Childress never won a Grand National race. Well, you're correct. Mm, sort of. Metrolina and Hickory Motor Speedway promoter Ned Jarrett had assembled the event and called it, quote, an exhibition of Grand National Stars, unquote, when he marketed to the fans, but it was not officially part of the Grand National Top Series. So you won't find a children's victory in any of NASCAR's Grand National records. In fact, a third place finish at Nashville in 1978 would eventually go down as the best finish for Childress as a Grand National driver. Nor will you find a fourth place finish in the record books as a Grand National start for young Mr. Earnhardt. Nope, Ralph Dell Earnhardt got started on a much, much bigger track. And we'll talk about that in our next video here on Rattling the Roll Cage. Well, whether you loved Earnhardt or just loved to boo him, he never minded either way. Once during a quiet moment at one of my home tracks, North Wilkesboro Speedway, he told me, hell, I love the ones booing me just as much as the ones cheering me. They paid their money and they deserve to have a good time just like everybody else. And all that stuff, hey man, it just sells me more t-shirts. Well, that's the spirit. I think we can all agree that racing just hasn't been quite the same once the Intimidator gained his wings to heaven almost 20 years ago today. His car owner and best friend Richard Childress perhaps said it best. Many people knew Dale Earnhardt the racer, but they also knew him as a person. You'd see him working on his car, throwing hay to his cattle, he worked every day and he enjoyed it and that's what the fans loved about him and his legacy is going to live in our sport for a long, long time. Well, I hope you liked this video and be sure to share it and subscribe to our channel. It's absolutely free and we'll be talking about Earnhardt's first official big league start in our next video. Until then, I am racing's greatest showman, Randy Pettit, and may all your days be race days. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.